Hi, I'm Kelly from Bok Bok Bouquet, and today I'm going to be talking about the hottest question I get, or should I say the coldest. How cold is too cold for chickens in the winter? Chickens are cold hardy. How you feel outside is not how they are going to feel. Just remember that. Their internal temperature is anywhere between 105 degrees Fahrenheit and 109 degrees Fahrenheit. Their heart beats 400 times per minute. And it's like they're wearing big down coats all the time. And you'll see when they're on the roost, they cuddle for warmth. So I say, once and for all, do not supplement heat for your coop. It could be very dangerous. A heat lamp could light your coop on fire, depending how close it is to your home, or your home could be caught on fire. Supplementing heat is very dangerous. And besides the danger of fire, there's the danger of no acclimation to the weather. Can you imagine right now if you just teleported to Alaska or something? That would be such a sudden shock to your body. If you suddenly lose power, the chickens could die and it could be very dangerous because they haven't acclimated to the cold weather if they were used to being warm all the time. Chickens are older than electricity. So back in the day, people didn't have heat lamps or anything and chickens thrived. You'll see pictures from the 1920s of old coops that are just like wire fencing covered in snow and the chickens are just fine. If you think about it, you see birds out in nature and they're designed for this. So do not worry how you're feeling outside in this cold weather is not how they're feeling. Chickens can do fine even in negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. I've actually heard stories from friends in Alaska, Canada, Minnesota, and it's been like negative 40 and the chickens were just fine. And how it's gonna feel in the coop with all their body heat is actually gonna be warmer than it feels outside. Depending where you live, there are some things you should consider. Buy a chicken breed for your area. If you live in a really hot zone, it, this might not really matter to you. Like I'm in California, so these kinds of things, like I don't really have to consider so much. But if you live in an area that actually gets harsh winters, maybe you shouldn't get a chicken like a Rhode Island Red, a Sex Link, a Leghorn. Chickens with very, very large combs are susceptible to frostbite. You might want to consider a chicken like the Brahma, more cold tolerant breeds where they have a very, very short like rose comb or pea comb where it's not susceptible to frostbite. The second key point I want to go over is water, something crucial that your chickens need. And in the winter, they can freeze. So one key thing that you might want to do is keep your water outside of your coop because if you have your water inside your coop, it's going to add a lot more moisture, which again, the moisture in the air can get on their combs, their toes, their wattles, and then they'll freeze and they're more susceptible to frostbite. So a way you can eliminate that is keep your water outside your coop. This is a really good water to keep in mind. It's got really thick plastic and it freezes a little slower. A lot of times when you come out here in the morning, just the top layer will be frozen and you can break it up and they can still drink. But if you're in an area where you get a really hard freeze, you might wanna change the water every morning because the chickens don't need water at night while they're sleeping. So make sure you go out every morning and change their water. Or heated waters are an option that you could consider. There are some products available to you to help prevent frostbite in the waddles and the combs and the toes. You could use Vaseline, but at many common poultry websites, they'll sell salves that you can administer onto the comb and stuff and help prevent frostbite. But in a second, I'll take you back to the coop and I'll show you some other key points on how you can prevent frostbite. Now on to my next point ventilation and draft freeing your coop. So you want to eliminate all weather and draft in your coop. You want to make sure that when they're roosting at night, they're not getting blown by the wind or getting hit by the rain. You want to keep them as draft free as possible, but don't, don't, don't forget ventilation. It's so important because when the chicken is breathing at night, they're going to be releasing moisture, which will in turn get on their waddle and comb and could possibly freeze. So you want to keep your ventilation up at the highest points in your chicken coop so that moisture and that heat can be released above where they're roosting so they're not getting hit by any sort of draft. Another thing that can be considered in the design of your chicken coop is your roost bars. If you have a wider roost bar, the chicken will be forced to have their foot more flat and to be laying on their feet and that'll prevent frostbite on their toes. 
because if you have too thin of a roost bar, their toes will curl over and they're more susceptible to frost. Chickens do not have feet like parrots. Their feet are not actually designed to, to like curl and grasp. The chicken's foot is more designed to lay flat anyway, so they'll be happier with that. Now my next key point. Now that we've moved past water, let's get to food. Chickens eat more in the winter, so make sure you always have feed available, free feed of choice. Chickens are foragers, so they eat all day. They're not equipped to just have meals, so make sure you have food readily available for them all day. A great wintertime treat is scratch grains, cracked corn for chickens. It's a good idea to give it to them before bedtime because it's a carbohydrate that metabolizes slower and they develop heat while they're metabolizing it. So they say it's a good bedtime treat. Keep them warm at night. And everyone knows chickens love scratch. It's one of their favorite treats. Another good treat during the winter time to help with your poor molting birds is mealworms or scrambled egg, add an extra bit of protein because it'll help them grow back their developing feathers. And a lot of people live in areas where there's no more greens and grass, everything's frozen over and there's lots of snow. So a good way to supplement greens is you can sprout your own seeds in your kitchen, grow fodder inside, or give them some leafy vegetables. But make sure you're taking care of your chicken's dietary needs in this crucial time of year. They need all the help they can get to help get through this cold snap. Oh, messy. Now let's talk bedding. Sand is king. Beach sand, construction style sand, it's really the best bedding over shavings, straw, anything you can get to put in your coop. It's good insulating, it's well draining, it doesn't retain moisture, and it keeps things clean. When your chickens are gonna jump into their nest boxes, they're not gonna track poop on their feet, but sand is a great winter option. Second best option, straw. It still holds some moisture, so I don't, I don't think it's a really good option, and I don't personally like how messy it is, but straw can be a good option for you. If you live in an area where you get heavy snowfall and your chickens aren't wanting to free range, don't force them, o leave the door open, give them the option if they want, but something that may entice them is lay the straw in the walkway because sometimes chickens don't want to walk on the snow, but they might prefer to walk on this, so that might be a way to entice your chickens to attempt to free range, you know, but don't ever force them, just give them the option. And then let's talk hay. Never use hay. Hay holds moisture and molds very easily, so I want to touch on that. Don't use hay, only straw, but sand is preferred. Why have my chickens stopped laying? Well, chickens naturally slow down in the winter. They lay based off of the sun cycle, so less daylight, less sun, less eggs. But some people will supplement light to their chicken, but just keep this in mind, that just like humans, Hens are born with all the eggs they will ever lay, just like women are born with all the eggs they'll ever have. If you force your hens to lay all through the winter, then it could affect their life, how much eggs they will lay in their, their lifespan. They will stop laying earlier in life. So either you give them a break in the winter or they'll stop laying earlier in life. I think that you should just be natural and let them have their break. If you do choose to supplement light for your chickens to continue them laying through the winter, Turn on the lights in the morning, earlier. Don't keep them up all night with the lights. Turn on the lights earlier in the morning if you are gonna do that. I don't personally really agree with that. I think that they deserve the break, but the choice is up to you. You see, I have some lights here. These are just lights for us to come in at night. We here are not running an egg business, so it doesn't really matter to us if our chickens slow down in the winter, it's just fine. Besides the sun, another key point of why your chickens have slowed down or maybe stopped laying in the winter is molting. If they're having a late molt and they're still molting now, chickens will not lay when they're molting. All their energy is going to growing new feathers, not laying eggs. Boredom. Boredom busters. So here's a few, we have a few of these laying around our property that we built. They're chicken monkey bars and they love to jump on here and perch. You're gonna wanna have lots of perches, chicken swings, stuff for them to do and jump on because even though chickens can't fly, they are birds, so they like to enjoy all vertical space that's available. So if you make that available, you really will double your space in your cooper run. Another thing we like to do when chickens get bored in 
Eh, well, we just love to give our chickens these in general, is a chicken pinata. It'll give them lots and lots of entertainment for hours, and it's a good way to give them greens like lettuce or cabbage. They will go at it and have a blast. Another thing you want to make sure you have available, especially if you're in an area where you get a lot of heavy snowfall or it gets a lot of rain, is have dust bats available. If you don't have natural areas for chickens to do dust bats, make one available for them. You could use a tote, a tire, a spare pool, anything. Just put some sand, wood ash, just make a dust bath available and that'll keep them busy for hours too. Chickens love their dust baths. The reason you want to keep them their minds going and stuff is you don't want a chicken to get bored because if they're pent up from bad weather like rain or snow, they could start picking on each other or even cannibalize each other. So make sure you keep your chickens busy at all times. You want to keep their minds going. Next, let's talk predators. Predators are more desperate in the winter. So you're going to want to take up extra precautions at this time of year. There's less food. It's more scarce. So they're gonna be a little bit more eager to try to make your chickens a meal. A good way to prevent aerial predators is have lots of like places for cover. Have like different things that your chickens can run to. So when the rooster or the dominant hen sounds that alert, they can run and take shelter, go back in their coop. So we like to have lots of different areas for our chickens to hide. Another great way to prevent aerial predators is have a good relationship with your crows and ravens. They will not let a hawk anywhere near this place. Good coverage, a good rooster, and ravens and crows, and that's how you prevent hawk attacks. Now let's talk ground or digging predators. Make sure that you lock up your chickens every night and that they are in a predator-proofed coop. That's how you prevent losing chickens at night to predators. Make sure that everybody is in there to sleep at night, and make sure that your run and your chicken coop is predator-proof so no digging predators can get in. So I always have people asking me, whether it's friends or clients or people in my local community that are getting into chickens or just curious, like, what do you do about chickens in the winter? So I hope this really helps you, even when we made our frequently asked questions about chickens for beginners, and we'll link it down below. My mom watched it and she was like, you forgot to tell people about chickens in the winter, how they don't need to supplement heat. She's like, that's a big one. And I was like, you're right, we did forget to go over that. So hopefully this helps people. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Subscribe to stay up to date with our new videos and I'll see you next time. Thanks so much.